In 2020, America has seen over three dozen hurricanes that have hit the coast of the southern states. There have been so many hurricanes this year that meteorologists have actually run out of letters to name them and had to move on to the Greek alphabet. And look, this is great because we can finally get the anti-immigrant folks to start fighting climate change with us. You know, they're, they're just out there going, these damn foreign hurricanes coming in, okay, taking good destructive jobs from American hurricanes, okay? Speak English, you force of nature. Look, if these hurricanes weren't enough, we, the entire West Coast of America is on fire, like literally on fire. This is not what we meant, by the way, by setting this shit on fire. That's, we like just took it a little too far. And look, I, I know a lot of conservatives want to blame this on Antifa, but this disaster was caused by the growing climate change problem, right? Fires like this only happen when vegetation uh, gets dry and uh, you mix that with a drought and long stretches of mismanaged forests. And really all they need to get everything going is a spark, right? And this can come in many different forms. It can come through a campfire, uh, excessive sunlight, or even a meteor passing through the planet temporarily uh, increasing the temperature of the upper atmosphere. But in this case, it was caused by dry lightning storms. In California and Oregon and parts of Washington have been burning and there's so much smoke that it's affecting weather in the East Coast as well, right? Smog rising has covered the sun that's affecting cities over 2,000 miles away. This decreases the temperature and can also have various different adverse effects like increased respiratory issues, which is exactly what we need during a global pandemic that specifically affects your respiration. And this has been seen time and time again, right? In Montana, they've seen flu rates increase after big fires because your, your lungs are a little bit more sensitive and that can lead to upper respiratory diseases being a, a lot more common. So, you know, besides massive property damage and devastating lives, these fires are also very hazardous to our health. I mean, at this point, with a large amount of hurricanes hitting the coast and an entire section of the country on fire, it's astounding to me that local meteorologists aren't on television every day screaming, this is climate change. This is, I mean, this is climate change, right? I, this is what we've been talking about. This is climate change, and it's happening right now. We should have invested in solar. We're, we're back to you, Tom. And I know some of you guys are, are sitting there saying, look, wow, this is really awful, right? Climate change is one of these issues that we definitely need to be contending with. And, and honestly, it's, it, this is devastating, and I'm very glad that it's only affecting the weather and not the state of everything that I hold dear. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> okay, yeah. The state of California actually had to put laws in place to ensure worker safety in areas that are prone to wildfire, right? In a logical country, if there's an impeding disaster, they would just help out workers and make sure that they are safe and they're not putting themselves in harm's way to turn a profit. But in a country where profit is more important than human lives, well, you kind of have to put laws in place to reinforce common sense. But of course, the people that are at the highest risk of all of this is uh, undocumented workers that are working in areas that see a lot of smoke, that see a lot of fires, like the ones at the Sonoma wineries. Now, this group is unable to not go to work, right? They're not, uh, 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 they're, they're not eligible for various government assistance. Like, they can't get this stimulus package, or they can't get on uh, a lot of welfare programs. And even if they do receive it, they're worried about using it because they might get in trouble for it. Uh, and not just that, you know, the, in California, and California, Gavin Newsom did try. He tried to cover these costs by giving them a $500 cash card. But, you know, that didn't really do much when kids are losing lunches 
every day in California. So if we tackle the climate change problem, that would mean less fires and that would definitely mean better work conditions for undocumented immigrants, which would mean more wine for suburban wine moms. And really, who isn't excited about that? Who isn't excited about seeing a purple lipped mother swerving into the parking lot of a middle school to pick up her kids? Who isn't jazzed about that right now? And speaking of school, the fires have affected schooling as well, right? To parents who've had to make their homes into classrooms, going, out, going outside for a little bit of recreation was crucial for childhood development. Right. In, in, some place, in some ways, it can help alleviate stress by going outside, taking a walk around the block, maybe going for a drive or something like that. But with these fires, that's become pretty much impossible. So the stress of being a student during the pandemic mixed with the stress of a world on fire, literally, and no coping mechanisms to help out, means that climate change severely affects the mental health of all Americans across the country. The fires caused by climate change are also showing the inequalities in our criminal justice system too, because there's a higher demand of firefighters in states like California. Prisoners are used to fight fires, and this has been the case for many years. They get paid like a dollar an hour, and when they get out of prison, they can't pursue the job of being a firefighter because there is a specific thing that they need to go through and uh, that specific training isn't available to felons or people that have been in prison. But on September 11th, after pressure, pressure from prison reform activists, Gavin Newsom, Governor Gavin Newsom, signed a law that would allow prisoners to be trained and become firefighters after they've served their time in prison. Now, part of this is Gavin Newsom saying that he's really not going to be fighting climate change, but he will use the labor force to help him keep suckling at the teats of the fossil fuel industry. This is a stopgap measure at best. And yes, this is a big win for, for prison reform activists, but it's not a win in terms of climate change. Now, there has been some pressure to overturn this law from police unions and a few firefighters. But as of this recording, Gavin Newsom has kept this law in place, and we'll see if Newsom gives into those pressures or not. And I really wish I could stand here and continue to say that this is a, a problem that's only happening in the United States. But in Botswana, Africa, hundreds of elephants are dying because of a neurotoxin that is caused by a cyanobacteria in their waters. The increased water temperature has caused uh, an increase in the cyanobacteria to form, and it started killing these elephants. And, and I know some of, some of you out there don't really have a, a stop spot for, for dying humans, right? But, but maybe you do have that stop spot for adorable elephants? And maybe this will make the Republicans care a lot more about climate change since, you know, their, their mascot is dying due to climate change. You, you, you might not have a mascot. You know, what other animal are you going to play? Like a platypus? You, you want to be the, that's going to be your thing is a weird duck beaver. Now, despite all this, right, Donald Trump has stated that everything will cool off. Don't worry, you guys. Be chill. Because the way, it's just going to, it's going to cool off. And, and science, uh, science doesn't know much. Science doesn't know anything, okay? I, I honestly think that his thought is that maybe the hurricanes will, will like fuse together and put out the fires in the West Coast, you know? Like they'll come together, like all of the hurricanes will come together like a climate change Avengers force, you know, and let nature duke it out. Or maybe he could throw some cash at it, like a porn star that he paid off to, to not talk about sleeping with him. Honestly, it would have been a lot better if he blamed it on a meteor. It scientifically would kind of make a little bit more sense. But look, a, a lot of the media outlets are, are making this look like, you know, Trump was the originator of climate change. Both parties are complicit in this. 
Remember, Obama would say that we need to go out there and and fight climate change. We need to be, we need to be on the forefronts and 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 you know work work towards renewable energies and decrease our carbon footprint, and then go ahead and approve Arctic Arctic drilling. This issue isn't going away. It's big and it's daunting, and if we all do our part, we can ensure that large coastal fires and over three dozen hurricanes and dead elephants don't become our norms. Downplaying this won't really help. Stopgap measures won't help. This has to be a shift in our culture and the way we want to live our lives. Right now, we are creating our own climate refugees and a massive mental health crisis that all swirls together into the tsunami of climate change. Why deny its reality when it's so clearly impacting various aspects of our daily lives? And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning into it. Uh, if you're if you're watching this uh, on the on the video on the YouTube channel, you might see a couple of cool, interesting changes. Uh, for, for for example, we have a green screen with a with a with a background. Uh, that's that's new. That's awesome. That's inter- uh, That's amazing. And that's because uh, this is being recorded at the Rivers Edge Studio, part of the Rivers Edge Radio Network. Uh, I'm very excited to be r- recording and uh, filming and uh, doing all my podcasts and live virtual stand-up comedy shows right here from the Rivers Edge Studio. Uh, and if you want to check out more things from the Rivers Edge, you can check them out on the TuneIn app. Just look for the Rivers Edge playlist and you get 24 hour streams of local Pittsburgh area music. Uh, It is an independent radio station that promotes independent musicians. So go check them out. We are very excited to be a part of the Rivers Edge studio, which is in the river part of the Rivers Edge radio network. Uh, But as I mentioned, I have live virtual stand up comedy shows coming up. These are shows done via Zoom that will be recorded right here in the studio. Uh, It is a a multi-platform comedy show with graphics and videos and uh, comedic social commentary. Each week, it's brand new material. I talk about a new topic every single week. And all you have to do is grab your tickets, you get a confirmation code from me, and then one hour before the show, I send you all of the login information via email, and then you log in, you sit back, relax, and have a good time. These happen three Fridays out of every single month, three Fridays out of every single month at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. If you want tickets to these shows, they are available right now on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're on my website, not only can you get tickets to these shows, but you can download my latest stand-up comedy album and check out all of my other stand-up comedy albums as well. Uh, I released a new one in June of 2020, June of this year, and it's called Politely Angry. You can stream it, you can download it, you can listen to it wherever you like listening to uh, music and comedy. But the best way to support independent artists is by going on Bandcamp, which you can do directly off my website as well. Uh, Bandcamp gives the most back to the artists. And right now, Politely Angry is available for $1 for a singular dollar uh, off of my Bandcamp page. Uh, so once again, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com to check that out. And while you're there, not only can you check that stuff out uh, and check out past episodes of this podcast, my other podcast, uh, Forkful of Noodles, but you can also become a sustaining member. You can make monthly donations to help improve the quality and quantity of this show. Uh, and, and that's if you can. It, you, by no means it, do you have to. It's awesome if you can. There are people that have already become sustaining members, uh, and there are various ways you can do that. You can do that directly on my website. You can do that through the Patreon. You can do that through PayPal. You can do that through Bandcamp. And what does that get you? That gets you free tickets to the live virtual stand-up comedy shows. It gets you early access to the longer full episodes of Forkful of Noodles, uh, which, are, which are basically what gets recorded from the Citizen Revolution shows and then becomes episodes of Forkful of Noodles. 
and you get unreleased stand-up comedy material. So you get all these awesome things by becoming a sustaining member. Of course, only if you can. Everything starts at about two bucks a month, but you can also make a custom donation as well. So once again, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. You can get tickets to my shows. You can download my album. You can check out more videos and content from me. You can sign up to my email list or you can, and or you can become a sustaining member, which is all very cool. Uh, and I appreciate everybody that listens to this podcast that comes back and checks out the new episodes uh, had, that has already become sustaining members that follows me on, on the YouTube, Facebook, Rockfin, that shares my content. You guys are amazing. You guys are incredible. Uh, and if you are new to the channel, uh, I hope you consider becoming a subscriber. I hope you consider becoming a returning, uh, returning listener to the podcast. Uh, so thank you guys so much. Uh, 